What is going on everybody? My name is Jonathan and today we are going to learn how to make a table in Photoshop. No extra plugins needed. You will need some sort of wood grain texture so you can download the one I will be using in the link below in the description. So download that and then let's get started. First, file new, create a new document. I'm using 1920 by 1080 as dimensions, uh, only 72 pixels per inch. Now you can see the keys that I use. If uh, I'm using hotkey shortcuts, because I usually do. All right, now we can get started. Create a bunch of new layers. First layer. My, what is this called? The marquee tool? Yeah, marquee tool. Rectangle marquee tool. This is going to be the table top uh, face. That'll probably work. Now select like a just a light brown colorish. Hit G, bring up your paint bucket, or you can click on it over here and fill. It's more orange, but whatever. Marquee tool again. And click on the next layer up. And control D to unselect so you, you don't have to click off of it anywhere. Make the first leg. G. Fill. Now what I'm going to do is click on this layer and hit control J. And now click on the move tool or hit V in future reference. Click on it. Hold shift, drag across. Now what you could do is click on this, click on both of those uh, left and right legs, hit control J again, but select this layer, move this over here, make sure it's aligned. And if you have, so you need to make sure you have the smart guides to show check marked right there that way it will show you when you like all these pink lines that is the uh, smart guides so now control t to transform that shrink that down so it's in line with that guy go back click on the other one control t shrink that down So I like to stay more organized. So this is the left front leg. This was the right front leg. This is the left rear leg. You'll see why later. This is the right rear leg. All right, new layer. So now come up here and choose the lasso tool or the, yeah. Now click here. So go back. I like do something first. Make sure you have the rulers. So if you don't have the rulers, either hit control R or go to view, check rulers, drag this out to here, drag this out to here. Same thing for the other side. And you can hit control, or I'm sorry, you can hit alt and then use the middle scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in. Drag that over to the edge. Zoom back out, zoom in on this side. And like I thought, this one was off. Zoom back out. You can also hit Z and then if you have scrubby zoom on, you can drag left and right and zoom in and out. Now go back up to your lasso tool. Click on this corner here. Click on this guy. Hold shift. 
to create a straight line. And then you can let go of shift to click back on the guide there. Now G, fill. We're actually going to make this a little bit darker just so there's some uh, difference there. Now this is the top main, top plane, top main, I don't know, whatever you want. This was the top face. We're going to drag that above the top main. Control D to unselect. Whoops. You hit Control F. It opens the find function. Huh. Now you can hit Control semicolon, and that takes away your uh, the rule the guides. Now click on the next layer. Now we're going to click on this guy. That was a total fail. Snap. There we go. Hold shift, make sure it's a straight line. I'm gonna move this up here in just a second. You're gonna this is going to be at the very top of right there. Now uh hit X real fast to swap these colors around. Hit G, fill. Make sure you hit X, swap those back around so you don't make that mistake later. And now control D. And what we're actually going to do is change the opacity on this. And this will give that beveled edge look to the front. Bevel. Okay, now we need another layer. With this, there's a cross plate here most of the time. And then G, fill. So make sure that this, it, control D to unselect so we don't get confused about that later. We'll call this cross piece. Drag that down below the top face because it needs to be below those. And it also needs to be below the front two legs. Alrighty, now we are going to drag in our wood grain. So you can just click and drag that straight onto your document. I just dragged it from the folder that I'm using. No special requirements. So now we need to J, drag that down one, move this out of the way a little bit. So now you're going to need a piece of wood for each layer. I'm just going to do this over here. So I'm just hitting control J to continually make new copies. There should be leg layer, leg wood, leg wood, cross piece, wood, leg wood, leg wood, top piece, wood, bevel wood. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's wood there. Okay. So now drag that over, right click, create clipping mask. T. So this is for the bevel. So this is this small piece right there. So this is where it's really helpful if you have those snap guides on because it's going to snap to those uh, spots. Okay, enter. Done with that. Now let's see. This is the top face piece. So control whoops. Make sure you 
right click on this, create clipping mask. Now control T, drag this over so it, it's in line with the edges. Hit enter. <clears throat> now, same story, clipping mask. So this is the right front leg, so transform, drag this down, drag this over. And while we're doing this, if you find this any valuable at all, I would greatly appreciate a like on the video. And if you want to see how I used this video in a larger scale project, or if you want to see how I used it, Feel free to subscribe so that you can be notified when I make that video that will be coming out next week, hopefully Monday. And that video will be a little bit longer. It's a lot more in depth. It's adding the table to a scene. Uh, it'll actually, it looks, it was actually this one. And so if you want to see that video, feel free to give a subscribe. I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button even if you don't subscribe the like button helps out a lot it keeps me gives me some motivation helps me keep going so just continue dragging these down get that out of the way almost done so for this one control t click up align it with the bottom edge here now hold control click drag so you want it to be lined up there we go you want to see both those lines now hit control drag same thing for the other side and right there enter looks good first try zoom in yep looks good first try Amy, drag this over, create clipping mask, control T, and one more, drag this over, control T, oops, I would almost keep forgetting to do that, create clipping mask, now control T. Drag this over. Enter. And so I don't know where this piece went. It doesn't look like it's there. It looks funny. It's definitely there. Super strange. It might just be the way the wood squished down, so. Oh, and the opacity was kind of turned down some, so you, you're not going to be able to see it as much there. So, actually, I think I'm going to turn that down even more. No. There we go. Turn it back up some. Gives... Right. Yeah, that looks fine. Alright, so this is almost done, but it looks funny. It doesn't look dimensional. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a shadow because this is the top plate that should stick out and does stick out past here. So there should be some sort of shadow here. So that's what we're going to do. So create a new layer. Rename this top shadow. Renaming layers is important to me. We're actually going to put all of this in a group so select them all so click on the top one click on the or click on the top one click on the bottom one holding shift click on that one hit control g and that puts it all in a, la a layer a group rename that table so now we're going to do the top shadow and by doing the top shadow we're just going to select the square mark key tool again and do something like this change our color to black G fill control D unselect filter blur Gaussian blur 
a little much, too much, too much, right, that should look okay. Now, control T, because you want the blur, or the shadow, to be consistent all the way from edge to edge. It's not going to be more dark here, unless there's a light over here underneath the thing. So, holding Alt stretches both sides. Hit Enter. Now, we're going to select everything over here, and hit Delete. That was actually too far over. Zoom in here. Go over just a skosh. You can just use the arrow keys to move over your selection. Now delete that. So there should be a shadow on this leg. There should not be a shadow on the bottom, on the back leg. So make sure you make a big enough selection to get all of the shadow that you're creating. Select this inside piece and hit delete. Control D, unselect. And now, same thing, there won't be a shadow on the, this top plate. So make sure you select a big enough selection area, long enough on those edges to get the whole thing. And you can see that it's too low, so hit the arrow key up once. Get that in line with that edge. Hit Delete. Control D. Whoops, that's Control S. Control D to unselect. Move over. Make sure you select far enough out. Select that whole thing and D or delete. Control D. Okay, so we're almost done. It still doesn't look quite the way that it should. So if you make this one in here, create a new layer, put this in this group. This is going to be the main shadow. You can use the rectangle tool or you can use the this lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool. So click here and here. And there should be a little bit of a shadow on the bottom of the feet, I would imagine. There's not gonna be any on the front of this leg, so that's why I'm only going to there. Now G, fill, control D to unselect. If you don't unselect this, it's very important because it will create a blur inside of the selection, but then you will have a very hard edge. It won't be beyond the selection, which is why it's important to unselect that. So Gaussian blur, bring that up quite a bit. And then we're going to bring the opacity down some. And we're going to squish this down. Move that up. Enter. Zoom out. Well, let's go down here. Make a nice looking background. Let's do something like this. G fill. There, and now you have a, what looks like a three-dimensional table made 100% in Photoshop, no extras. You do need a wood grain. You can grab that in the description below. Thank you for watching. Hit that like button, smash the subscribe button so you can see the next video. Have a good one, stay safe, and we'll see you in the next one.